Hi, I'm Richard Fulton. A seminary student wrote me today and said, I just finished taking your course, but I have a very troubling question that I need to ask you. It's a question about sin. If when Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden and he fell in that sin, and we all became sinners because of it. And everyone now has to die because of our sin. We automatically became sinners because of what Adam did. Then how come we don't automatically become righteous because of what Jesus did? If Jesus died for everybody on the cross and rose again, then how come everybody is not automatically saved? I would like to answer that seminary student's question tonight. And by answering the question for him, hopefully answer this question for the many people I've had who've asked me something similar to that before. Basically, if Jesus died for everybody, then how come everybody's not saved? In the book of Romans chapter five, the Bible says through one man, sin entered into the world and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sinned. Now death spread to all men because all men have sinned. Adam's sin in the Garden of Eden affected all of creation, but it did not condemn all of creation. Animals don't die and go to hell. Plants don't die and go to hell. They're affected by the fall, but they're not condemned by it. How come you and I are automatically sinners? How did we get into that inheritance of sin and death? We were born into it. And so by our birth in Adam, we inherited Adam's sin, and thus we became sinners, thus we die, and we have to stand before God in judgment. So how come everybody is not automatically saved when Jesus died on the cross? How come we don't automatically get credit for what he did? Well, again, how do we get credit for what Adam did? We were born into Adam's race. That's why Jesus said, ye must be born again. You see, to get credit for what Adam did, we had to be born. To get credit for what Jesus did, we must be born again, okay? And so here's the difference here. After talking about how everybody became sinners through Adam, the apostle Paul went on to say in Romans chapter five, talking about the free gift, okay? And my pages are stuck here, so let me get that page turned over. He says, but the free gift is not like the offense, all right? So in Adam, there's an offense. In Jesus, there's a gift, all right? And so with Adam, we were born into the sin and inherited the offense of our father. Through Jesus, we have to be born again, and by being born in Christ, as we were in Adam, then we inherited what Jesus did. But it's a gift. So by receiving the gift, we receive the new birth. By receiving the gift of what Jesus did for you, you are born into the family of God. Here's how it works. When Jesus died on the cross, he died in your place. And so when Jesus died, you legally died. And so who you were in Adam died that day on the cross. You died in Adam. And since Jesus died for you, when he went to the grave, he was buried for you. And so who you were in Adam died on the cross and there was buried in the tomb. But on the third day, Jesus came up out of that grave and left 
your old identity in Adam behind. Remember what the Apostle Paul said? He said, I am crucified with Christ. So who he was in Adam, that first birth he had as a child of Adam, was crucified that day on the cross. And the Apostle Paul said, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? A new creature. Old things are passed away. So by receiving the gift of Jesus' death for you on the cross, your old identity in Adam dies, is buried in the tomb. But the third day, Jesus rose again. And so the tomb becomes the womb that gives birth to the new creature in Jesus Christ. So you were crucified in Christ. You were buried in Christ. And then when Jesus rose again, you rose again with him and the old identity in Adam stayed buried in the grave. The womb is the tomb that gives birth through the resurrection of Jesus Christ to you. All of that is a free gift in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so how did you get credit for what Adam did? You were born into Adam's family. How do you get credit for what Jesus did? You are born into Jesus' family by receiving the gift that God gave you when Jesus took your sin on the cross, died in your place, was buried in your place, but rose again to give you a brand new identity no longer being judged on account of what Adam did, but now be able to stand before God being judged on account of what Jesus did for you. You have a choice. You can either stand before God being identified through the sin of Adam, your first birth, or you can stand before God being identified in the righteousness of Jesus Christ, your second birth. The first was without your knowledge, it just happened by nature. The second can only come by your consent, by you receiving the gift that God is offering you, by saying, yes, I will have what Jesus did on the cross for my salvation. God, I will have you judge me no longer on the, the condition of what I can do, for myself, no longer on the condition of what Adam did for me and the sin I inherited from him, but now on the condition of who Jesus is and what he did for me when he died in my place, put away my old identity, and on the third day rose again to give me a new birth into the family of God.